Alright, hello you people out there, this is Michael of Two and a Half Stooges, and welcome back to Game Maker Video. So, power-ups, you can do stuff. You can run around, you can hit these things, you can get different attributes, it's all fun. But what if you wanted to store these? What if you wanted to use an inventory? What if you didn't want to use the effect instantaneously? And that leads its way over to the inventory part of the game. Or, the part of the game that doesn't exist yet that we're going to make. So, let's see, let's go into the... Um, the player object and have a look at what happens when you collide with the power up. You collide with the power up, this is its effect, the code and event performed other, and you did define zero. And sorry if my voice sounds different by the way, I just like woke up 20 minutes ago and I decided to sit down and record something. And it just uses it, it doesn't do anything else. But if you wanted to be making an inventory thing, uh, you could be storing this in something called an array. I don't think I've talked about these yet in the series, but we can be using an array. And for those of you who don't know, I'd imagine pe most people do know about arrays uh, before I even talk about this, but they're basically one variable that can hold an entire set of values. And that sounds a little bit weird at first, but then you realize that you can use it to access a bunch of different things. And you can get to the different parts of the variable, the different values stored in the variable, with this thing called an index. So you can do things like loop through them, or pick a random element, or things like that. So the way you set them up is, say, something like an array of 0 equals uh, 1. They look like this. And you can access them by saying, uh, quite simple, I'm going to do this in a show message because that's the easiest way to do this. So me show message array of 3, or uh, or of 0, or of 2, or 5, or whatever, and you can run the game. So that's 3, and okay. You can also loop through them like I was mentioning before, so we're going to say uh, quickly for something like that. And this will show on the screen all of the values in there between 0 and 4. So that'll be a total of 5 different numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's about it for arrays. I'm not going to go into too much detail about these. Uh, I'll probably make a separate video on arrays and data structures later. But for now, for those of you who don't know how those work, those are arrays. Now to do an inventory, we're going to be storing stuff in an array. So like all other variables that we're going to use, we're going to want to initialize it here. So inventory uh, equals of zero. And we're just going to set this to no one, the special object. No particular value, we just have to know that it's there. Technically, it's equal to negative 4 within GameMaker's engine, but I don't want to confuse anybody with that. And we should also know the size of the array. In Studio, you actually don't have to do this because there's a function that will tell you the size of an array, but in 8.1, uh, you don't have access to that, quite unfortunately, so that's going to be um, the index of the last, uh, the last index in the array. All right. And in collision with power-up, instead of saying this, and I'm actually going to cut that to the clipboard so that I can get back to it later, we're going to be saying, we're going to be saying that. And what this does is that it adds the object that you just collided with to the end of the inventory. So for example, at the beginning, inventory size is, size is zero. So you'd be adding, um, you'd be adding the power-up you just collided with to the zeroth element of the, uh, the array. And then you increment inventory size. And then, second one you collide with, you're going to be adding it to the first element of the inventory. That sounds really weird, but that's not really the first, but whatever. And the inventory size is going to increment once again. And so on. I am actually going to take the, uh, the event perform uh, line that I cut earlier and put it on notepad, because I actually want, might want to um, cut up and paste something else in a minute. Now. To display this graphically, I'm actually going to just add a little bit of code to the draw event. I will do that right now, I'll cut it out, and then I'll explain it briefly. There we go, so we're just going to loop through the, uh, the inventory, and then draw the sprite of the objects that we have in the inventory on the screen uh, at a position just below the, um, the level name in the HUD. If you don't understand this, um, this part of the loop here, where it's um, describing the position to draw the sprite at, don't worry. It's just a little bit of math. Something else I also want to do now that I think about it is when you, uh, when you collide, that's not, that's not what I wanted to do. When you collide with a power-up, move it off screen. You don't want to destroy it yet because you still want to be able to use it 
at a later point in time, but we don't want it to keep being there for us to repeatedly collide with so you can just like get infinite power-ups of the same thing and completely break the game. So we're going to say um, other.x equals negative 32 because that's off screen. And same for the y, and that is wonderful. Let's see. Uh, let's just go and add a couple more of these things to the, to the game now. Uh, I'm going to add another one of these there, and I'm going to add another one of the purple ones here. And there we go. Let's see. So, okay, I've run into that. You can see uh, the purple thing has popped up under level one. Another one. I missed. Excellent. All right. So you can see quite clearly they're being added to the inventory. Now, to use them is actually pretty simple. We are going to open up the player object, and I'm going to add another uh, key press event. So I'm going to say key press, how about um, I for item or inventory or something like that. And we are going to say um, with the object that object stored at the position of inventory with the object stored at that position and the size minus one there is because remember inventory size in this example at least holds the index of the uh, the last value in the in the inventory array so the first value that there's nothing sitting at so you're only going to do a minus one or else you're going to get some weird error telling of game maker telling you that there's nothing there and then there we're going to want to say if I can open up my notepad uh, event perform and then we're also going to want to um, delete the instance. And lastly, we're going to want to shrink the inventory size. There we go. All right. So we're almost done here. Uh, we can go and run into that. We're going to hit the I key. I think I misspelled something. Oh, wait. This part here makes no sense. And I wasn't paying attention. And I was losing the scope of my variables. So we're going to want to uh, move that outside the with statement because obviously uh, the objects don't have an inventory size variable. Let's see. There we go. And I'm going to hit I. And we are now tall, except we're stuck in the wall because that sprite is bigger. And uh, the game doesn't really know what to do there. So the lazy way to deal with this is I'm just going to put in the effect player dot y plus plus equals 16, no, not 6, 16, and that way uh, when you turn big, when your sprite expands, you're going to, um, you're going to move up a couple pixels, and that way you won't get stuck in the floor or anything if you run into a power-up. So we're going to be just doing that, and we're going to hit I, plus equals, not minus equals, ignore me, and we're going to do that, and we're going to hit I, if we're big, and we can run around fast, and we can not get stuck in walls. And then uh, we have a couple other things. We can turn fat or whatever, and we can turn uh, tall again, and we can turn that. Now, when the inventory is empty and you hit I, you're going to get this error. And that's just telling you that inventory size is 0, and that minus 1 is negative 1, and you're trying to get the value at a negative index in an array. And unless you're in Python or something weird like that, that won't work. And that just means we really should check to make sure that there is actually anything in oops in the inventory before you go and hit the I key. So now we can do this. We can hit I. We're big. We're hitting I, and there's nothing in the inventory, and nothing's happening, which is all good. So that's complete. You might notice that I just restarted the game. You might notice that um, when you use an item, you're taking it off the end. Uh, so this is effectively what is known as a stack. If you wanted to take it off the beginning of the array, uh, that would require a little bit of math so that you would use the item at position zero and all of the other um, all of the other items in the inventory would be shifted down one position because now if you do this, uh, if you run into this and if you do this and you hit I, it doesn't know what to do. Uh, it uses an item, it uses an object, deletes it, and now um, it's trying to, the game is trying to deal with an object that doesn't exist anymore. And that's just going to use a little bit of basic logic. I'll write it out here for you if you really want to. 
And here it is. It happens to be rather simple, actually, but this is just going to loop through the array and move everything in it back one position. So uh, the item at inventory of 1 is going to go to 0, the item at 2 is going to go to 1, and so on until the end of the array. So when you run this, uh, you can... Let's pick up just two of these for now. Now let's pick up all four of them just so that you can see uh, a little more clearly. But we're going to hit I, and you may notice the positions are shifting down a little bit. So... There we go. That's it for inventories. There is something in GameMaker that they have that could make this rather easier, but I wanted to talk about it at the lower level so that people would understand it a little bit more clearly. But I will someday, probably two or three weeks from now, uh, maybe next week, I don't know, make a video about those, and those will be the data structures. So for now, I hope you all enjoyed that. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Watch all the stuff I have uploaded, and I will see you all later.